modern day. This is the hieroglyphic of the modern day. This is the hieroglyphic of the modern day. And then I wonder what graffiti I say. This is the hieroglyphic of the modern day. And so we like to say there's more strength than unity. And community works is really come. C-O-M-E, come, unity, it works. So we all just came together last year for the first time and everything just happened naturally. Um, and we did two murals, three murals in Dangriga um, at the Gulisi Preschool um, and at the Drums of Our Fathers right as you enter Dangriga town. Um, and the community turnout and support and inspiration that that we saw and that we received um, just really reassured us that this is the direction we need to keep moving and um, this year again it just evolved naturally and, and more community is coming out and so we see more strength in that unity. Well last year in Dangriga um, at the end of our, our trip they said you know Carl Ramos would be a good spot and so that's kind of was our foundation and, and so we did Carl Ramos Stadium in Dangriga. Um, quite a big portion of it as you're walking into the gates there's a whole section that says Carl Ramos Stadium, beautiful coloring, vibrant, and then a next side that says Community Works. Um, and then we did out at Why Not Island, the back of the basketball bleachers says Dangriga in very funny colors. So everybody coming in from the riverside, yeah. everybody coming over the main bridge, they see, they know they in Dangriga. <laughs> For settlement day, everybody gonna know they in Dangriga. And then Stella Maris, um, it speaks to both of our hearts. Um, we both have people near and dear to us that have special needs. My sister's deaf, deaf culture is a part of my upbringing. So it's very special to be here and to be doing this at Stella Maris and expanding our works outside of Griga. My name is Joy Wesley. I'm the principal at Stella Maris School. Well, I actually got a visit from Miss Hannah. And, um, I think what captured me at, in the very beginning was that um, she told me that she knew sign language. And so that was a plus where I actually brought into it. So I questioned her, of course, because we're a government school. I brought up the idea to the board of management and we went from there. The I love you sign stands out and not only um, not only is the physical feature of it, but it's so huge and you can see from off the street, it makes you feel the love. Because oftentimes I do have some students who they would come to school with their shirts off because of the fact that they feel humiliated in the uniform because they're sometimes teased. You know, and the children, they feel special. I think some of them wanted to go and paint because I was asking when I asked them this morning because I introduced the team to them. When I asked what they saw when they entered the school and they, they were all excited. I said, what does this sign mean? And they, they shouted, I love you. Just them bringing out that I love you this morning, the first day of class for the third term. We are very thankful to this team for stepping up and selecting Stella Morris because many times I do believe we're seen as the forgotten school because as, as I had mentioned to you earlier, we had an open day and we invited schools and only one school visited us. Having this big graphic that you can see all the way from Karl Hushner, this should be some motivation for the public to actually look in and you know to maybe want to drop on by and see what's happening in here behind that big I love you sign on both the, the students hands you know, so I really appreciate that and then there's the Bengche oh, in Bengche yeah. where we all just got to free up yeah. <laughs> yeah. we had some extra cans some leftover cans from his, yeah. uh, his project at, uh, at, uh, at uh, the stadium so then we just did something really fun creative out there. Bangladesh basketball courts yeah. in Dangriga. Where you saw yeah. the lizards. Surrounded by youth. Well, it 
you know, what happened is with, with um, well, it all started, we've only actually been using aerosol cans for, for a short, relatively short period of time. Crosby, about four years. Myself, about a year and a half, almost, yeah, a year and a half now. So um, it was really important that we started going back into community and beauty, beautifying, because there's all these edifices, but they all need some love. So it was an opportunity for us to give back to something that's very important to us. So that was kind of the launching pad. I had an opportunity to do a mural in Charleston. I also illustrated a children's book, and that's how Hannah and I connected. She saw the work there. So we donated books to the school, and it's kind of evolved from there. So now people are starting to recognize the level of work that we do, the quality of work that we do, and they're asking for us to come and be a part of a lot of different communities. So as soon as we got back from Griega last year, we hit St. Andrew's PSD. Yeah. And then after that, I did a, day, a daycare. So it's just kind of evolving naturally. You know, I met up with Jocelyn probably less than a half a year before we made our first trip down here last year. And um, so I had no contact with Gary Funa culture and never been to Belize before. And designing a mural and not necessarily having that content was interesting, but I knew that as soon as I got down here, being totally surrounded by such a vibrant community, being able to draw, you know, draw references from all around me and incorporate that into the mural itself. It was such like a, a beautiful thing to see the sketch that we came down with and then to see how that evolved in, you know, through our interactions with people and, and just to see how the end product was different than that initial sketch that we had. It was a beautiful, you know, transition. Evolution, yeah. yeah. Evolution, living thing these murals represent for us. Yeah. And, and what we, we were amazed. I know I can speak it to, we were amazed. We didn't know how diverse um, Belize was. So there's Memonites here, there's Indians, there's Mayans, there's Garifuna, there's all of these people, all of these people here. So what happened is, in, especially his, his wall, um, we were able to represent and incorporate everyone's culture. Yeah. So when everyone walks by the wall or they walk by the school, they walk by the monument, it's their own self reflected back to them, yeah. right? So that's where we are. We just, we are the mirrors to reflect it back. Send us to Belize, please! So the process is someone basically reaches me just kind of the same way that you did and we elevate the conversation from there to find out what the needs are. Uh, we start talking about resources. Um, we uh, start talking about hospitality and the things that we'll need logistically um, to make that happen because what we like to do is hit the ground running. Right. You know, we try not to have to come here and try to capture resources, ladders and coolers and things like that. So there is a process and we, we are getting better at communicating that out sooner than later so that the hosts, when we come, they have their, their supplies ready for us and we come with all of our supplies and we just go to work. Um, well, one of the things is, yes, it is, it is a finite niche per se. However, we do believe that public art, street art, urban art, whatever you'd like to call it, community art, is actually the voice of the people. So it's very, very critical that we start showing you to express themselves, to express their voice. And it's extremely important that communities give them space to do that. It's critical. So it's not even necessarily so much about artistic technique and form. Those things anyone can learn with practice. We must practice any, we have to become masters at anything we decide to become masters at. But if there is no conduit, if there's no free space, if there's no safe space where that will be honored and revered. You know, there are places in the world like Chile or Brazil you can literally walk up to any wall at any time and do anything. The entire culture fully embraces them doing that because if it's not that, it will be something else. And, and something a whole lot worse, a whole lot more detrimental. So we're really hoping now that with the interest that we will start to be able to come back and do workshops and, exactly. and teach these youth how to do this. Because you can make a quality living as an artist. And that is one of the myths that we are trying to dismay. It is, that is not true. You can do whatever you want to do. So one of the things is we want to model that. We want to come here and model that. And then the next part of that is we want to come back and teach how to do that. And, and just to speak on that, um, like in Dangriga, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the walls that we touched covered up graffiti, mm -hmm. gang, gang yeah. signs, you know, gang graffiti. And a lot of the youth that put that graffiti on that wall were out there every day watching the works and picking up techniques yeah. and watching and learning and asking questions. And they haven't touched those walls again. Yeah. 
you know, and they're they're really curious and they and they want to know and they ask questions and so it, it is our hope that as these works grow, that we can have these workshops and actually, you know, create that yeah, space. Absolutely, it's a dynamic art form. To be honest, that when you watch somebody an aerosol artist and when you're watching them you know, do their flares and use their special techniques and caps. It is engaging, and they are watching. And one of the spots that we had last year, the police drove up to the, to the site <laughs> yeah. and said, would you cover up this ugly trailer because it had horrible graffiti on it. Yeah. Now, when law enforcement <laughs> comes and says, and please beautify that, we're on to something here. Yeah. You know, and we need more support from, from local government. We need more support yes. from law enforcement. We need more support from teachers and parents. Right. You know, and anyone that wants to get involved in any way. There's space for any gift. More strength and unity. Yeah. I do both, so this is a quality question, because I do sell easel <coughs> paintings and things like that, and that is for private collectors, absolutely. But public art is the voice of the people. It's free. Anyone can walk by and look at it and, and, what, and, and draw their own conclusions, no matter what it is. They can say, I hate that. Oh, I love this. This speaks to me. Ah, get inspired. Go home and do it. It doesn't matter. It's free. Anyone can see it. And that's why public art is so powerful. So the youth are watching and they go, oh, I could do that too. Oh, I have a voice too. Yes, you do. And that is the most important piece. Because there are some people that spend $50,000 on a painting and they put it in their dining room and no one ever sees it. Right. So you what's know? the point of that painting? What's the what point? does that painting do for the community at large? But if you can take this, this neutral medium, such as the aerosol you know, paint or any sort of mural, and uh, inspire youth to use their creativity uh, constructively in a positive manner, that's what it's all about. Everybody creative, you know? And and when I heard that, you know, when this young man said, oh, people from States Creative, no man, everybody creative. And this next youth who had spent quite a bit of time with us, the whole time, he was at every mural site, and he just looked at the youth and he said, no man, if God bless you with common sense, you can be creative. And, and especially, I mean, we started in Dangriga, the roots and culture capital of Belize. So there's so much creativity and, and music and arts and, and it's there, it's just not being encouraged or utilized. Um, so that's, that's what we want to do is just to inspire youth to use resources that we have, you know, available locally and, and be creative and, and find ways to express yourself um, in the positive, mm -hmm. for a positive message. It's also about giving. Right. It's about giving. Public art is about giving freely with no expectation of return, no outcome. You just give it. You plant the seed and you walk away from it. Service. Service. I know everybody has <laughs> talents and everybody has gifts. It's all about taking what you have and bringing it forward for the benefit so of everybody. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. About. So See, what you have, not what you would like to have, not what you hope to have, what you have right now. Focus on that. Take what you have and make something from it. Whatever it may be. Yeah. And we're saying that. This culture is already, they, they are re super resourceful. So we're reflecting that back in, in this new way. And that's happening. We're seeing that. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that. The, the, the walls that we touched, the school, uh, the town wall he did, the monument, they're in pristine condition. Mm -hmm. So what happened is we showed up there, the whole place was dirty, it was trash on the ground. By the time we left five days later, they had activated themselves, started cleaning up, picking up the trash. You know, they had tattered flags, they pulled the flags down. No flags. Pull up the roots that were just weeds, and they just started caring about their home again. Right. And that's critical. That's what arts, that's what arts, that's what we're hoping to do with the arts, is give them something that they're proud of and that, that will activate them to continue forward. Because they literally can do the same thing that we're doing, if not more. Good question. <laughs> I would like them, to, I would like them to feel inspired. And, in, and that's a very broad stroke answer on purpose. Because inspiration comes from all different facets and forms. and So I get inspired by the creator, I get inspired by nature. As long as they walk away with some inspiration. And inspiration to me means hope. For whatever it is. They've had a bad day. Or if their life is, they feel their life is in a rut. It doesn't matter. You know, 
studies have proven that a gray wall versus a wall that has vivid bold colors has a different result on the human psyche the emotional field the emotional field the aura of a human being changes so if they come and see beautiful flowers and it inspires them it breathes life back into them they have more energy that's 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 enough so any any one of those things to me falls under the umbrella of inspiration I was gonna say inspiration. <laughs> we can share it. <laughs> it's broad enough. But, yes. But but no, I'm gonna say healing. Mm. Healing. Because everyone takes a different message from art, and it touches a different part of our our soul, of our spirits, and so I'm healing. I hope anybody who looks at, at the pieces we've done can can draw maybe maybe something from their past. It reminds them or. Or, or drives them to do something in their future, or or makes them, you know, forgive something in their present. Healing. I'd have to say just thought. I feel like so often I'm caught up in my own world in my head, and my head's in the clouds, or just walking forward with my eyes on the ground, and just having this colorful wall. I would just hope that it would snap people back to reality and give them something to just reflect upon for the moment take it wherever they want to take yeah, it. Yeah, reflection, reflection. Yeah, freedom, yeah, man. Just, you know, they can decide for themselves. Yeah. We would like to thank the community. We would like to thank you mm -hmm. and all the hard work that you're doing. It inspires us as well. We want to just, uh, the, the community has been so gracious to us. We can absolutely say thank you. And we want to definitely take space to say thank you to Hannah. She really is uh, a gem to work for. If she called us anywhere on the planet to create art, we would show up. Um, there's not a person that we would not respond faster to than her. So we want to just, you know, support her any way that we human, you know, any way humanly possible that we can. We're just glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, and and just on that note, I mean, we're here because we love art. Yeah. We're here with because we love to just give back, and and so we have to thank the community to, for, for backing us and really coming out and showing support and thank you for coming and, and supporting the works and um, you know it's just growing from here and, and we're so grateful. Yeah, limitless, limitless. Expansion is happening, it's happening. The consciousness, the spirit, it's, it's happening so we're excited about that. Where in the world can we find all these treasures? Hidden inside this jewel of ours